Okay, let's take a look at an example with numbers. Okay, not just the chart, not just the theory. So let's take a look at the right-hand side first. We do, from last chapter, what we did is that right-hand side part, master budget. With a certain level of sales expected, we expect to sell 8,000 units. Again, each unit sell it at $12. That's the sales price expected. So we expect to have 96,000 sales revenue. Variable expenses total $64,000, meaning that each unit you expect to spend $8. So contribution margin will give us $32,000, and then we expect all the machines depreciation fixed salary to be $20,000. So overall, this is our expected operating income. At the end of the entire month, we realize this is our actual results. We sold out 10,000 units, and apparently not each and every one of them is sold at $12, because if it is, we will only have $120 thousand dollars but we got hundred twenty one thousand dollars okay variable expenses is eighty six thousand dollars again apparently it's not eight dollars per unit otherwise we should have eighty thousand dollars contribution margin is thirty five fixed expense is nineteen thousand which again is different from what we expected so we want to know why are there differences between the two where does this four thousand static budget variance come from we set the flexible budget in the middle to decide which areas really made the difference and led to this. Okay, so first of all, we compare these two, which we actually readily talked about this example. We have additional 2,000 units. So flexible budget, we set it as 10,000 units, the same as actual results. Okay, meaning that we only pick this part here. We did a lot of the columns, but we only picked this part of the flexible budget and put it here for comparison. So theoretically, 10,000 units, we should have $120,000 of sales revenue. We should have $80,000 of variable expenses and $20,000 of fixed expenses. So these two differences, these two columns, flexible budget compared against the static one, we have an additional 8,000 operating income, supposedly we should get additional of this based on 10,000 units of sold, additionally sold out. But at the end, we only got additional $4,000. So this is because if we compare flexible with the actual results, we realize that sales revenue part, we actually have additional $1,000, which is favorable to operating income because this boosts up our operating income, right? meaning some of these sales transactions, we were actually able to get more than $12 per unit from customers. So that led to overall our sales revenue to increase above $120,000. If we look at the second category, variable expenses, we should have only spent $80,000, but we spent $6,000 more, which led to an unfavorable number to operating income because that is additional money that we spent on selling these items. Okay, fixed expenses, we spent less. Perhaps we overestimated the depreciation on certain machines. So we had only a thousand, uh, we only spent $19,000 here. We expected 20,000, so we had additional $1,000 that's favorable. So if we add all these up, the U's and the F's, we have $6,000 unfavorable from variable expense. We have a thousand favorable from sales. 1,000 favorable from fixed costs. So overall, we have $4,000 unfavorable based on comparing these two. Okay, then sales revenue, sales volume variance part, we have 8,000 8, favorable here. So overall, we have 8,000 favorable from sales volume increase, that increased 2,000 units. We have 4,000 unfavorable from all the remaining, especially variable expenses that pulled down some of the increase that we got from sales. So overall, we have 4,000 favorable operating income, comparing actual with static. Okay, is this confusing? No? So basically what this is, again, is what we're trying to do is compare, general ideas compare what we budgeted at a certain level with actual results. But to help us do analysis on where exactly this 4,000 additional operating income come from, 
We set the flexible budget in the middle, setting operating, setting the sales volume the same as actual sales volume. So this is the number that theoretically we should get if, besides the 2,000 additional sales, if we still remain $8 per unit of variable expense, if we still remain 20,000 fixed costs. So this part here, based on sales volume variance, we should have had additional $8,000 of operating income. But then if we compare this with the actual results, we notice that we had additional $6,000 of variable expense spent. But we also had a decreased fixed expense. We had additional sales revenue. So overall, this unfavorable 6,000 decreased to only 4,000 of favorable. So if we add these two effects together, sales volume differences with the cost differences, overall we have additional operating income, $4,000. So this basically just gives us additional idea on where exactly did that 4,000 come from. So you can see that 8,000 comes from sales volume variance. That should be a plus over there, but we had a minus here of 4,000 because of additional cost spent. Okay, so overall we had a plus $4,000 on operating income. So $12,000 was our original plan. At the end we got 16,000.